which uh, gives us an opportunity to show you the men who'll be working today's ball game. The officials, the official crew, and our referee today will be John Storty. The head linesman is Tom Barone. The field judge will be John Malnati, a late entry coming into to this game, and Bill Strumke will be the umpire. And uh, there's a unique opportunity now to go down to the middle of the field uh, with Chris Jewell, who's got the handheld hammer, and uh, watch our official crew get the captain set for today's ball game. I'm Mr. Story, I'm gonna be official. Now, all I ask you out there is to play clean and hard all time, and watch your blocking blow to waste, okay? You're the visiting team, who's gonna make the call? You're gonna make the call, all right? You call it, and we'll tell you if you get it or not. All right, he says heads. What's he got? Heads it is, you win the toss. Defer. You want to defer it to the second half, so they're going to defer it to the second half. You have the choice this half. What do you want to do? You want to receive the ball? All right, which goal do you want to defend? All right, stand with your back up here. West Lake will kick off. East Chester will receive. West Lake has the choice, second half. Okay, fellas, shake hands. Come on, ready to play. Story. All right, so. Uh, not too often you get a chance to get right down in the huddle and uh, listen to the official as he uh, gives his instructions and the teams get set for the opening kickoff. And as you heard it, uh, Westlake won the toss and they deferred until the second half. So Eastchester will get the football first and they'll go on offense first. The uh, head coaches in today's ball game, you've already met them in our pregame show for the Westlake Wildcats, Rich Beckley, now in his third season at the helm, replacing Dino Gar after he left Westlake to go over to Rye High School. And Rich uh, now in his third season with a career record of seven wins and 13 losses. Uh, and he's stuck in that huddle and uh, he's about ready to come out. Rich Beckley, who's also uh, the wrestling coach over at Westlake High School. And uh, there's Mr. Beckley. Seven wins, 13 losses. And in the middle of that huddle there, Diarco, the head football coach for the East Chester Eagles, replacing a guy by the name of Kurowski. Some. Uh, Years back, four years to be exact, and John in his fourth season, a career record of 16 wins, 12 losses, and one tie. Guy learned a lot from you, didn't he? Well, John's replaced me as the head football coach, but he's been with me as an assistant for the 10 years that I've been there, so he's been coaching his fourth year head coach to him 14 years. Of course, uh, you, you continue to take credit for the defenses, and uh, <laughs> he was the defensive coordinator. <laughs> Now, how can I take credit That's, for it? He's the one out there doing a job. He's the main man. Well, He's the head coach. He, he always is. will be the head coach. <laughs> That's right. And uh, he actually has uh, quite a task at hand, uh, not only this game this season. He's going to earn his paycheck this year, as he has in years past. Uh, the Eagles struggling on offense and uh, playing in front of the home folks and on television. Hopefully, he's going to get things turned around. That's right, John. He'll earn his paycheck like every other high school coach in the Listen county. He does 60 <laughs> cents an hour. <laughs> All right, we're about set to begin. And this is a short kick yeah, taken by the Eagles. Morgan right up the middle of the field, and he's across the 35-yard line up to about the 37. So East Chester will have it there first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. And here's how the Eagles will stack up offensively. At quarterback will be number 33, Butch Burroughs. He is a junior. The tailback is Matt Gabelli, a senior. The halfback, Mickey Morgan, a junior. And the fullback, number 30, Paul Petrillo. He is a senior. The wide receiver for the Eagles will be Mike Salvatore, number 80. He is a senior. And the tight end, number 28, Jimmy Handel. He is also a senior. First and 10 for the Eagles, their first possession of the ball game from their own 37-yard line. And penalty markers on the play. And a little move motion on the offensive line, illegal, will go against the Eagles. That'll be their first penalty, and that will be for five yards. On the offensive line for the Eagles, anchoring is Joe Luciano, number 51. He's the junior at center. The two tackles, Ralph Fashillo, number 68, a senior, and Billy Sabatino, number 77, a senior. And the two guards, Rocky LaFaro, number 56, a senior, and number 75, Chris McCory. He is a junior. The offensive line, uh, kind of tiny, averaging 5'11", 188 pounds. And on the offensive side, the Eagles use eight seniors and three juniors. Burroughs on his first play, gives the football away to Gabelli, the fullback, and he is back to the original line of scrimmage. So he gets the five yards they lost on the penalty, and it will bring up now a second down and 10. 
Defensively for the Westlake Wildcats, they'll start off with the five-man front. The two ends, Larry Riccardi and Ralph Signo. The tackles will be Anthony De La Rosso and Chris Milek. And the nose guard, number 52, Paul Schiller. That defensive line, 5'9", 172 pounds is its average. Wildcats at one and a one so far this season. One and oh in league play, so they still got a shot at Byron Hills. And they'll give the football again, this time to the fullback, Paul Petrillo, number 30. Slipped as he tried to make the cut and uh, got just about a yard, and that will bring up a third down and nine. And the rest of the defensive set for the Wildcats, three linebackers in the middle will be Bill McKenna, the outside men Steve Cassell and Steve Bouglione. The cornerbacks are Matt Coleman and Matt Brown, and the safety will be number 12, Jeff Weigel. The Westlake Wildcats on defense, they use seven seniors and four juniors. So big play early for the Eagles, third down and nine from their own 38-yard line. They go with the draw and give it to Petrillo, the fullback, and he's only able to get it up to the 40-yard line, pick up of three yards, and uh, that will bring up a fourth down, and the Eagles be for forced to punt it away. It was interesting to note that what Westlake was doing the first and second down, they were in a five-front defense. That means they have five five front men and then they have three linebackers then a defensive backs now in that last situation they were in a four five and then with the linebackers playing close tight pinching in there was no way to get through the middle so burrow sets back to punt the football away he'll hit it from about his own 30 bad snap and he's going to take it himself he has some room gets around the end and i believe he's got the first down the official spotting it right at midfield on the 50 yard line we'll have to see exactly where he did go out of bounds but he is very, very close to the first down stake. And I don't believe this was a design play. The snap was way off the mark. And uh, as soon as he got a hands on, as you're about to see, he just took off for around the corner. Now you're gonna see Butch Burroughs. He's a good talent. And right there, he has that rush coming in. So if he can get around, he has the outside open. You can see right there, he's going for that first down and we'll see if he makes it. He's an all section pitcher on a baseball team. He's a junior. And as you can see there, they didn't make it. Missed it by about an inch. He came very close to picking up that first down. Give him 10 yards, or uh, nine yards as it turns out, on the carry. But uh, the Wildcats are gonna get it back nonetheless. They'll have it first and 10 in Eagle territory at the 48-yard line. And for the offensive unit for the Wildcats, that quarterback is a junior, number 14, Matt Coleman. The fullback is Steve Cassell. The tailback, J.P. McGinty, a junior. And uh, the Z-back, or a slot back, will be Jeff Weigel. He is a senior. The tight end, there are two of them, as you saw, Steve Bugliom and Chris Sargent. Both of those gentlemen are seniors. First and 10 for the Wildcats. The ball in East Chester territory at the 48-yard line. McGinty and Cassell, the setbacks behind Coleman. And on the first play, the option, they'll lose two yards on it. Number 25, Philip Mulderi came over to make the stop. A loss on the play of two yards, and it'll be second down and 12. On the offensive line for the Wildcats, Paul Schiller anchors it at the center spot, number 52. The two guards, Lou Piccione and Dave Healy, they're both seniors. And the two tackles, Anthony De La Rosso and Bill McKenna, they are also seniors. And that offensive line averaging 5'9", 177 pounds. And the Wildcats use nine seniors and two juniors on the offensive unit. Second down to 12, getting back to the ground. Slipping off of a tackle, J.P. McGinnity, and he'll break it away down to the 20 yard line to the 10, five, and he got in. 49 yard run by J.P. McGinnity. Five, seven junior and the Wildcats strike first. This is an excellent run by J.P. McGinnity, but you're gonna see right here, there's a missed tackle right there. Just missed it, now he gives a little juke. He's going to the outside. Now this is a foot race right here. Good speed, he beats out two defenders and he already goes in for the score. Now J.P.'s a returning starter and the last game he had 11 carries for 115 yards and he's off to a great start in this afternoon's game. He's a strong outside threat, which coach told me earlier in the week and he proved it right there. Here's Rob Conti in to attempt the extra points, a low line drive and doesn't get across the bar. But in any event, with uh, 8.41 remaining to play in the first quarter, the Wildcats strike first. They lead Eastchester by a score of 6-0. The key play there, John, was that 
the key that set that touchdown up was the, when Butch Burroughs was back there, and he tried to get the first down by running around the right end, and he, and he just missed it by inches. And what that did for Westlake, that put him in an excellent field position. And this is one thing that I'm sure that Coach DiArco feels the same way as uh, Richie does for Westlake. You know, in a game like this with uh, the weather and the field conditions, you want to score first, you want to score early. And this is what Westlake has done already. Big 49-yard run, and watch Westlake on top, 6-0. It is a cold day, as you saw on our on-the-field graphic in the pregame show. Temperature just hovering around the 40-degree mark, and with that 20, 25-mile-an-hour wind, uh, we're looking at a cold day in December here, first weekend of October. It's a tad chilly, but uh, that wind is going to do a lot in drying up the field. Going to go from soggy to be pretty dry before this game is over. Another short kick. Ball fumbled on the turf. And finally coming up with it for Eastchester. That's number 30, Paul Petrillo, and he is leveled right at the 20-yard line, and the Eagles will have it there first and 10. Now, Paul Petrillo was really hit on that play, but you're going to have to understand that Paul is a strong, strong individual. He bench presses 320 pounds. He's got about 17-inch arms, so he's gonna, he can take the physical punishment. Well, Burroughs brings the club up. Got Mickey Morgan as a wide receiver split to the near side. But they'll go right back to the ground game and give it away to the fullback or the tailback, Matt Gabelli. And Gabelli gets it up to the 25, a pickup of five yards. It'll be second down and five. Very quick scoring summary for the Westlake Wildcats. 840 of the first quarter. Two plays, 49 yards, a 49-yard run by JP McGinnity. The extra point was no good. And Westlake leads this one 6-0. Now Westlake's in a 5-3 defense. And again, Matt Gabelli, number 40. A couple of more to the 28-yard line. Pick up a three. It'll be third down and about two for Eastchester. As I mentioned on top of the program, John, that the offensive line for Eastchester, they're going to really have to have a good afternoon. They're going to have to be consistent in their blocking. They're going to have to really drive out those defensive linemen from Westlake. Morgan split to the near side. Mike Salvatore, number 80, up to the top of the screen. Gabelli and Petrillo, the setbacks behind Butch Burrow. 6-1 junior. On the option, he'll take it himself. Got a blocker in front of him. Good move to the inside, and he'll get it close to the 40-yard line. And that will be a good run for a first down. They'll spot it at the 39. This is a good run to the outside. He's coming to the left. There's the fake. Now he's got a good block right in front of him. Good moves, quick feet. He picks up the first down. Two men bring him down. Now, what... One thing that they're going to have to understand, and then people watching this game are going to have to understand that East Chester is not going to throw the ball, or they're going to be hesitant in throwing the ball because they have the wind, the strong wind, blowing right into their faces. First and 10. 6.20 left to go in the first quarter. And another big hole opens up. Matt Gabelli across the 45. And that will be good for another first down. They're hitting the holes right to the, to the right. Here's the offensive end. Let's see what he does. He's walking down. Gabelli runs right through a beautiful hole. Takes a good pounding right there. You saw at the end of that play, the ball came out, but uh, already whistled dead. And uh, now they're going to bring the chains out for a measurement. And as they make the stretch, he did indeed get it. 11-yard run by Matt Gabelli, 5'8", senior tailback. And that's the second first down by the Eagles. Nice-looking drive. This one started back at their own 20-yard line. They'll get the clock wound up again, and Eastchester has it first and 10 from their own 49. Now Eastchester's in a wing left. It's Gabelli. And the bruiser across midfield. 
into Westlake territory at the 44-yard line. Pickup of seven yards. Well, that line couldn't do too much to Westlake on the first series, but uh, either the coaching staff found something or the uh, the guys on the line decided to come out and play. Well, what, they're starting to open holes. Yeah, well, what, East Chester's mixing it up. They're running off tackle, they run outside, and the last play was a trap right up the middle. They're mixing up their offensive calls. A whistle on the play, and that's going to go against Westlake. On the far side of the field, the defensive end, Larry Riccardi, number 35, jumped at one of the signals barked out by Burroughs. And with that five-yard penalty, that's going to give East Chester the first down. You'll see, watch the top of the screen. There he goes, and into the neutral zone. And as soon as that happens, that's an automatic five-yard penalty. And this time it is good for the first down, number three for the Eagles. And they'll have it first and 10 now from the Westlake 40, make that the 39-yard line. Now, Ralph Segno from Westlake has just entered the game. He's a junior, 5'10", 178. And we have more whistles and penalty markers lining the field. The, me the reason I mentioned Ralph's name, John, is because I was talking to him during the week when I was up at Westlake, and he was really excited about playing the game, especially being on TV, and he said he was going to come and play with a killer instinct at the defensive end position. Now, this is where East Chester has to have consistency. They can't make any mistakes, just like a fumble or offsides. They just have to maintain their poise, continue on with the drive. They're doing a good job and take it in for a score. That five-yard penalty now will set up a first and 15. Now Westlake's in the 4-4 defense. They got those outside linebackers to take care of the outside run. Just under five minutes to go, first quarter. And struggling for a few extra yards is Paul Petrillo, the 5'8 senior fullback. And Petrillo fights ahead for two yards. Be second down in 13 now. See, that's a good thing about mixing up your defenses because if you're out with a five defense, you're using that, and you notice that the offense is picking up yardage on you, then you can change into another defense and then maybe maintain and hold the offense. This way, you know which defense is working for you, and then you can blitz a man here or there and really stymie the offense. All right, Salvatore now the wide receiver to the near side of the field. Burroughs still has it, looking to turn the corner. Not a whole lot there, but he struggles forward to the 40-yard line. He'll get credit for a three-yard carry there. Good defensive coverage by the Wildcats, stopping the option play. But what happened, Matt Gabelli was just too close to Butch Burroughs. He's got to be out away and behind Butch at least four yards so that the man will either go for Butch Burroughs or go for Matt. And then if Butch, the quarterback, sees the man come to him, then he can also pitch back. But they were too close together. Clock continues to roll, 3.50 left. First quarter, Westlake leading 6-0. East Chester now with a third down and 11. Neither team has put the ball in the air yet. East Chester, they're sending trips over to the left, bottom of the screen. Gabelli, the man in motion, across the middle, and it's completed. Joe Pinto, number 10, makes the reception. Good for a first down at the Westlake 27-yard line. And that's one thing that East Chester had to do. They had to convert on third downs, and they've done it right there. Now, here's motion. They're putting trips to the left. That's the bottom of the screen. Butch Burrows just a drop back. This is a nice pass thrown right in there to Pinto. Beautiful catch and picking up that first down. Matt Coleman, the cornerback, number 14 on the tackle. As this drive for the Eagles continues, first and 10 at the 27-yard line. Burrows gives it away to the tailback, Matt Gabelli. Gabelli across the 25. Mark it at the 24-yard line, and there will be second down and eight. Now, you'll notice in drives, McAbelli's running the ball a lot up the middle, right and left, but you got to watch Petrillo. He's the fullback. He's the strong man on a team. He's got the power, and he's the lead blocker. He'll try to clear that lane, open up the hole for Matt. Clock still rolling. 2.19 remaining to go, first quarter. Again, play action by Burroughs. Nobody in front of him. Gets it to the 20. And finally forced out of bounds. Close to the 15-yard line. 
And he'll be very close again to another first down. which has good speed getting to the outside. And what he's doing, he's beating that defensive end coming in. And once he rounds that corner, then he has some daylight. He lowers the boom, he picks up as much yardage, going for a first down and possibly trying to take it in. Well, they got seven, which means he's a yard shy and it'll be third and one now for the Eagles. Driving it back at their own 20 yard line. After Westlake, on their second play from scrimmage, scored on a 49-yard run by J.P. McGinnity. The Eagles have now marched down the field. Cabelli sent in motion, again three receivers to the near side, and it's Burroughs on the quarterback keeper, and he is all the way up to the 10-yard line. First down, number five for Eastchester, all on this drive. One pass, the rest of them have been runs. Yeah, this is the formation that they've shown before, and what they're doing, they're just playing it safe. They're getting that first down. You only had a yard to go, just no handoffs or anything. The quarterback just has their quarterback sneak, and they did get the first down. Now they have, well, first and goal, really. That's right. Timeout on the field. Charge to the Westlake Wildcats. That gives us an opportunity to uh, try to bring you up to date as best we can on what's going on this weekend in Section 1 football. A bunch of games have already been played. Some others will go today and some more tomorrow. In Class A this weekend, Roosevelt will play Clarkstown North tomorrow. Scarsdale, a winner over Carmel to go to 3 0. They beat the Rams 10 6. North Rockland now 3 0 on the year as they knocked off New Rochelle Friday 21 7. White Plains will be at Mamaronic on Monday. Number 5. Ossining shut out Lakeland 26 0. And last night, Iona Prep over Mount St. Michael 21 12. And Stepanak defeated Holy Trinity by a final of 19 to 17. Let's move over now to Class B. So we told you, Ryan Byram Hills are going at it this weekend. They're playing today, as is Harrison against Porchester. A couple of big ones. John Jay beat Peekskill 7 0. Pearl River over Edgemont 10 0. Woodlands versus Sleepy Hollow and Pelham and Nanuet, both games to be played this afternoon. We'll check out Class C's action a little later on in this ball game. Down to 141 left, first quarter. East Chester now with, uh, they actually will have it first and 10, just outside of the 10 yard line, so they can pick up a first down without getting the touchdown. But it'll be right on the goal line if they do that. They'll go back to the ground game. Gabelli, nothing there at all. This time, Larry Riccardi, the defensive end, up to make the stop. No game. It'll be, well, actually give him a yard. It's now inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. It'll be second down at 9. And this is where the offensive line of East Chester really has to dig in, and they have to block. They have to make the contact. Good white base. Drop the feet. Drive the man back. Well, this so, is the toughest turf, eh, inside the 20? Exactly. You have the, Right now, you're going to see the defense of Westlake. They're going to play tough down there. Very tough. They'll come the other side. Mickey Morgan does a nice job keeping his balance, but the defense has time to come up and converge and make the hit. No gain. And it will be third down and nine. He does a nice job here picking himself back up. Yeah, he has, got, he has good balance right here. He gets hit, keeps the feet, but then there's no yardage there. Mickey Morgan is an all-league baseball pitcher. You have Butch Burroughs uh, also a pitcher. They're both juniors. You better look for East Chester being good in baseball again this season. Steve Buglione, number 20, the outside linebacker, made that last tackle. Third down and nine from the nine-yard line. Burroughs on the rollout. Looks into the end zone, and it's intercepted. Westlake will run it out of the end zone, picked off by Jeff Weigel, and Weigel brings it back to the 10-yard line, and East Chester will have, or Westlake gets it first and 10. And a little complaining yep. going on with the guys in the red and white. Now, East Chester's in a power eye right. They have good blocking for Butch. He has his time. He throws it right in the arms of number 12 for Westlake. Now, all he had to do was just put his knee down. The ball would have come out to the 20-yard line. A little contact in the back of the end zone there, and I think that's what East Chester was hollering about. But uh, they won't get anything. As a matter of fact, they're going to lose the football as Westlake will have it first and 10 with just about 20 seconds left to go in this first quarter. That's a backbreaker to drive all those yards and then end up with Westlake coming up an interception. You have to give Westlake credit. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Ball resting just outside the five. And the 
quarterback, Matt Coleman, take it himself and gets it across the 10 up to the 11, and that's a gain of four yards. It's interesting to note, now watch when you see Westlake come out. They're gonna line up in an I formation, then they're gonna shift into a veer. The two backs are going to split. Now Westlake runs a true veer, it's reading. If that quarterback sees that hole open, he'll take it. If not, he'll pitch. All right, the first quarter has come to an end here at Jarvis Bowl in a pretty good ball game. Eastchester stunned in the opening moments on a 49-yard touchdown run, and then they drive the length of the field and give up an interception. 6-0, Westlake leading the Eagles, and we'll return with second quarter action in just... There really is only one way to stay on top of all of the high school football action in Westchester, and that's with Cable 3 Sports Extra Points. I'm John Caridio, and every week the Cable 3 Sports team covers the gridiron like no one else. We'll have highlights from all over. We'll visit with coaches and players, give you the weekly top tens, and a complete look at the big games yet to be played. So join me every Tuesday night at 7.30 for Extra Points. We'll give you the score. Back here at Jarvis Bowl. This is part two of our scheduled doubleheader this weekend. Last Friday, we had uh, Ardsley coming up a winner over Bronx, or pardon me, the other way around. Bronxville defeated Ardsley. Show you the folks, show the folks at home. Now, uh, the Mighty Mites, as we like to refer to them, have been faring in this uh, wacky weekend. Uh, Pleasantville's playing Briarcliff today. Hackley knocked off Croton, number two beat number three, 20 to 18. Irvington shut out Valhalla, 16 nothing. That's 12 wins in a row for the Bulldogs. Hastings will play at Rye Neck tomorrow. Dobbs Ferry beat Tucko 21-6, and Rye Country Day over Dalton 13-6. And as I mentioned, that other score on our game of the week last Friday at Memorial Field, Bronxville, two straight shutouts now as they knocked off Ardsley 14-0. <laughs> it's second down and six for Westlake as we begin the second quarter. The Wildcats leading 6-0 in this ball game. Right now, they're in, their, in a bit of a hole at their own 10-yard line. Back to the ground game. Everybody likes to keep it on the ground in this one. J.P. McGinnity again. He scored the only touchdown on a 49-yard run. And uh, we've got a whistle on the field. McGinnity very slow in getting up. And I think he really took quite a pop. And now the uh, Rich Beckley, the coach, is going to come out and have a quick look to see how seriously the injury might be. McGinnity did pick up the first down on the run. Seven yard gain, making an eight yard carry. First first down, but uh, out there you can see uh, Rich Beckley, the head coach for the Wildcats, Don Cicero, the athletic director, and the doctor today, uh, Dr. Jose Boyer, the Eastchester team physician. And uh, McGinnity is gonna get up. May have just had the wind knocked out of him. Took a pretty good pop, but uh, he'll come out for one play. No, one thing that you have to really be careful of the fact is that East Chester had a tremendous drive. They came up empty, and then it's sort of like disheartening. So you, got, you have to motivate the defense. You have to get them up. You say, no, forget about it, because Westlake just has the momentum, and they're picking up first down after first down. And now they have another first down, first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Matt Coleman, the junior quarterback. Now, they didn't shift out of that eye, Westlake. You have the football off to number 40, Joe Catalano, reserve running back, a junior. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we still have uh, to show you the defense set for the Eastchester Eagles, which we'll do momentarily. A two-yard pickup for Joe Catalano. And uh, we'll get to that defensive page after the next, next play. Now let's see if Westlake shifts into the veer. They're in an eye. They're staying with it. Second down and eight. Pitch comes outside. McGinnity is back into the ball game. And he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a couple of yards behind that. Yep, he lost two on the play. And uh, that means it'll be third down and 10. All right, let's show you the Eagles defensively. They'll start with that four-man front. At the defensive end, you've got Chris McCory, a junior, and Billy Sabatino, a senior. The tackles, Joe Chiafone, a junior, and Ralph Zapetti, also a junior. And the inside linebackers, Paul Petrillo and Ralph Zingaro. Petrillo, a senior, and Zingaro is a junior. We'll get to the deep backs in a second. Third down and 10 now for the Wildcats. The ball at their own 18-yard line. 
Second quarter, Westlake leads 6 0. On a double handoff, they give it back to Coleman, the quarterback, and he'll uh, get it up to about the 25, make it the 24, but it'll be a fourth down. And uh, finally, the defensive backs for the Eagles. You've got Morgan and Burroughs as the two corners. The outside men, Matt Cabelli and Philip Mulderi, and the safety is Mark Delafamia. And we've got another injured player down on the turf. And I'm not sure if that's Coleman or not. Mark Delafemina, the safety on defense for East Chester, is last year was the starter for Tuckahoe. It's number 12, Jeff Weigel, the uh, Z-back, six foot one senior. He was the lead blocker on that last play. And very oh. interesting call. Oh. Uh, Coleman, the quarterback, gave it to McGinnity, and McGinnity turned right around and gave it back to Coleman. And that left Weigel as the lead blocker on the play. They got it up to the 23-yard line, short of a first down, but uh, Weigel's still down on the turf. Oh, what a shame for Westlake. Jeff Weigel, he's a senior, 6'1", 170 pounds. He's the co-captain of the team. He's the best all-around athlete on the team. He's an all-section baseball player, all-league basketball player, and he was honorable mention all-league in football. Plays three sports, great athlete. That's one player they don't want to lose. He, he's at a skilled position. And as he comes off, he's favoring his left leg a little bit. So they'll work on him along the sidelines. But Westlake now will be forced to punt the football away with a fourth down and about four yards. And uh, this is interesting. Weigel is usually the punter. So uh, he's not going to be in there. We've got a backup man now coming in to punt the football away. Rob Conte, who handles the extra points and the field goal kicking. But before he's able to boot it, we've got penalty markers on the field. See, if the East Chester coaching staff knows that he's not the regular punter, what they could do is put a punt block on, really put the pressure, because this might be the first time he's punting, be a little nervous, maybe not handle the ball correctly, and go in for a block. But one thing in their advantage, John, when that ball is punted, if the wind is blowing into the faces of Westlake, so the ball may be going back, and it may be a short punt, which will give East Chess a good field position. Well, that was a pretty big call by uh, the Westlake captains on the opening point toss, probably the biggest battle, or the first battle of any event uh, in the beginning of the game, to get that wind. And it is a strong one as you look at the field blowing from uh, left to right. And as Coach mentioned, the Wildcats now will be punting right into the teeth of that wind. You take a look at Jeff Weigel down along the sidelines. So uh, Conti now into punt. Five-yard penalty, illegal procedure. Good snap, not much of a rush, and a very high but short kick. And it sails out of bounds at, they're gonna mark it at the 22-yard line. That's a two-yard punt. That win is really something. Wicked. That's just as good as blocking the punt. Now, they're in good field position again. 9.26 left to go, second Let's quarter. Go, and East Chester has it first and 10 from the Westlake 22-yard line. East Chester has the field position. Now they need the momentum. They need that consistency in blocking out of the front lineman. They have to. Salvatore, the split end to the top. They'll go back to the ground game, give it away to the tailback. Good move to the outside by Gabelli. Turns the corner and forced out of bounds inside the 15. They'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Now, Steve, Steve Cassell is number 22 for Westlake. Now, here's uh, Matt Cabelli running. Now, you're going to see Steve, number 22, right there, miss a tackle. That was crucial. Matt goes around the end, squaring up his shoulders, and he does pick up yardage. He only need two yards for a first down. That was a good run. The defense of Westlake now has to rise to the occasion. It's second down and one. They're calling on the defense for the second time. Pinto and Morgan, the wide receivers to the top. Burrows on the keeper, still moving ahead. He has the first down inside the 10-yard line. First down, number six for the Eagles. And they're going to spot it at the nine, so East Chester will have it first and goal. 
was a five-yard run by uh, Butch Burrow. On a quarterback sneak, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Clock still rolling. 8.50 to go. And operating the clock is Jim McCarthy. This is his 19th year. It's a lot of years. That's a lot of time that's gone by. They go on the draw to Gabelli, but uh, Larry Riccardi, number 35, the defensive end, having a pretty good defensive game for himself. As he comes up to make the tackle, the ball now down to the six-yard line, a pickup of three, and it will be second and goal from there. Right at the six. These are tough, tough yards to get right down in here because the most valuable real estate in East Chester right now is that goal line. East Chester wants to get in there. They do not want to come out of this game with three losses in a row. Matrillo and Gabelli, the setbacks behind Burrow. They'll throw it outside to Gabelli. And Petrillo couldn't finish up the block. And Gabelli goes down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be third and goal. As we take another look at this, watch uh, Paul Petrillo, the lead blocker. Yeah, now you, yeah, watch him. Now also wa watch Matt Coleman, number 14, coming in. Watch how he plays there. There's number 14, that, and there was number uh, an 80. An 80 was, and I just missed. That's good, that's good pursuit. Good speed, good pursuit by the Wildcats of Westlake. It's very difficult to get around the out, to the, hit the outside perimeter. Now here's the decision right here. Timeout on the field, charged to the Eagles with uh, 7.37 left to play. In quarter number two, Westlake leading in this one by a score of six nothing. The only touchdown at uh, 8.41 of the first quarter, J.P. McGinnity on a 49-yard run. And uh, the Eagles got the ball back, marched it down the field, got it inside the 10, then uh, coughed it up with an interception. And after a very short punt, a punt of two yards by Westlake, the Eagles got it inside the 20 and are now faced with a third and goal from the six yard line. We'll remind you every Tuesday night here at Cable 3 and uh, you're gonna wanna join us this week to try to keep up to date uh, with all of the action on a very extended weekend of high school football. This Tuesday night at 7.30 on Extra Points, we'll have uh, highlights of selected games from around the county, including our two games of the week, Bronxville against Archley and Eastchester against Westlake. And we'll also have uh, the latest top fives and also uh, what's ahead for these teams as uh, we're cruising into week number four. Doesn't seem possible, does it? Four weeks no, into the season. Very, went very quick. Now, Tony Archiello just spoke to the offensive team. They all came over. He spoke to them. And we're going to have to note right here, John, this week he's a single man. Next week he will be married. Oh. Sunday. All right. No so big down, actually big two downs for East Chester. Third and goal from the six yard line. Eagles will go with double tight ends. Morgan the slot back. Burroughs, play action, he wants to take it himself as the guards come out. They get lay out a good block and he goes in. Excellent blocking by the line. Opening up a big hole and from six yards out, Butch Burrow has tied the ball game. There's a good call because now with Butch rolling out, don't forget he can throw, you see right there? Now he's, he's holding up the linebackers, good hold, excellent blocking. Goes into the end zone with joy and happiness for that, tying the game up, 6-6. Six, six. So now the extra point attempt upcoming for the Eagles. Chance to take the lead, it'll be Ralph Zingaro, number 85. Burrow will be the holder. Ball is down, kick is away, and it is good. So with 7.21 left to go in the first half, the Eagles have come back to take the lead. They're up 7-6. Two-yard drive. This is going to give good momentum now for East Chester. Just that one extra point. Now here we're going to see the touchdown right here. Watch the line block, and there's Butch Burrow with a little fake. He's going to the right. He sees the hole. Good move. He's pumping those legs in the end zone for six. 
That play was well executed. Hello! So East Chester and Westlake doing battle here this afternoon. And a day that is 100% better than when we arrived here this morning. I, there's actually blue skies out here. Well, now. I'll tell you, this morning I woke up, it was raining, I walked outside, and it was raining so hard that it actually hurt. I didn't think that there was gonna be a game. I called Dom Ciceri, athletic director of East Chester, like 8.30 this morning, and he said he's gonna check the field, call back 20 minutes later, it's on. And it is a beautiful day. Turned out to be gorgeous. Still cold up here. You have that wind. It's a biting wind, and and it's also a, a major factor in in oh. this ball game. Uh, East Chester now with the wind to their back, and when we come out in the second half, remember Westlake deferred as they won the opening coin toss, so they're going to try to get that wind to their back in the fourth quarter, I would imagine. A low squibber, and the ball handled by McGinnity, but he picked it up with one knee on the ground, and that blows the de play dead automatically. And Westlake gets it again, first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. No, that's one transition that the athletes have to make. When you're on a baseball team, the coach tells you, no, get down on the knee, try to feel the ball, and you get into that habit. You're so used to it. You're playing baseball during the season, then you play baseball in the summer. Now it comes to football, and a ball comes to you like a baseball, they get in the habit of putting that knee down. Once that knee touches, you're down. First and 10. A couple of wide receivers to the top of the screen for the Wildcats. Coleman flips it to McGinnity, gets one block, turns the corner, and down he goes. Just about at the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up a second down and 10. Scoring summary for the Eagles on that last drive didn't take a whole lot of time. Only 22 yards for the Eagles in five plays. They score at 721 of the second on a six-yard quarterback keeper. Zingaro with the extra point. The Eagles go on top 7-6. Wildcats 1-1 one and one on the year. 1-0 oh in league play. Eagles 0-2, oh both overall and in League 7. Weigel is back in the game in motion. Play action by Coleman. Looking down the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. And a penalty marker goes down. Now this may be pass interference against the offense. You can hop over if you want. Now, no, why, like, why is, is this pass interference against the offense? All right, we're going to see right here that the East Chester man is going for the ball. Now, you have the right to go for the ball. Now, he's going for the ball, and he did, as he was going for the ball, block the offensive man from Westlake. And what the Westlake man did, he just pushed him, pushed him down, and that's an interference because you have the right to go for the ball, and anyone can catch it. And this is... This is the absolute worst penalty you can get in high school football. It's a 15-yarder and a loss of down. You can't get too much worse than that without giving up the football. Especially this afternoon with the wind. Yep. It's going to be it's tough to throw in West Lake's it. face. Yep. Now, if they go back to punt, if they have another two or three-yarder, look out. It's big trouble. It's now third down and 25 with the 15-yarder and the loss of down. And it's back up the middle. And a pretty good gainer. On the carry, Steve Cassell, number 22, the senior fullback. And he gets a pretty good chunk of it back. But uh, the Wildcats will still be forced to punt it away as it will be fourth, and we'll call it 13. Joe Ranello. There's Joe Ranello, John. There he is. The band director at East Chester. Understand uh, his son Joey is uh, starting uh, fullback for the Port Chester Rams. And he's doing a tremendous job the first game. He rushed for over 70 yards. They got a big one this week against Harrison. It was a nice kick. 
Low line drive, handled by Burroughs right at midfield. And almost had the ball come out as uh, number 88, Chris Sargent, tried to strip the ball while making the tackle, but Burrow holds on, and the Eagles will have it first and 10 in Westlake territory again, this time at the 47-yard line, and we've got another marker on the play, thrown late. And I'm not exactly sure what this one's gonna be all about. Butch Burrow's got that ball, he was running to his right, he was trying to get behind the wall that his Chester was setting up, and once he gets behind it, and then he's, he has the wall, He's between the wall and the sideline, and once he squares his shoulders, he wants to go all the way in for another score. Well, discussion on the field, and a penalty looks like it's going to be assessed against Eastchester. Now, this is, if this is, uh, yeah, it may be a first down for Wesley. The right? problem here, though, is that the chains have already moved. They were already set up for Eastchester to get it first and 10. Now, I'm sure that somebody must know where the play was, and they're marking off a 15-yarder. And I believe the Wildcats are going to have it. John Storty, the referee today. Defense ready. And uh, he just keeps walking back and forth, marking off yardage. I'm not exactly sure. He's trying to find out exactly where that chain was located because those so. chainsmen are not allowed to move that chain until the official says, okay, now move it because time is out. The clock is not running. All right, the problem of the, the call, illegal participation, they had too many men on the field. I want to know the guy that counted 12. <laughs> Did you hear that? Diarco said he wanted to know who was the guy who counted 12, got the A in math. <laughs> it can't be first down. There was it was. So it's a 15-yard penalty, and uh, that's good enough for a first down for Westlake as they will hold on to the football. Once to find out who the guy was that counted 12, what side he's on, we'll send the next guy <laughs> on the opposite side. So a very big penalty. Westlake holds on to the football. Now first and 10 from their own 38. And nothing there at all. Tried to go to the first back throw. And the defensive line up there to make the stop. Yeah, that was just a straight dive. East Chester defense is getting a little tougher now. No gain on the play, it'll be second down and 10. An illegal participation, just a fancy word for too many men on the field. Here's Butch Burrow. Quarterback. Now you see his haircut? Nice. See that haircut? That haircut was given to him by Harry Milano just before the game. He was in there giving haircuts. And he does it for nothing. I think Chris Chulo ought to get one of those. Look good on him. Coleman wants to throw. Pumps once, lets it go. It's incomplete. He was looking deep. He wanted uh, Jeff Weigel who was way down the field, but uh, again, with that win, it's very difficult to get it out there. Okay, and, uh, that, you'll watch him yeah. pump here once, and that's yeah. who he's looking for. Now that receiver's open, that linebacker, Petrillo, he's gotta come out, he's gotta come out into this flat. See, he has to play that flat. Well, he had a man open, Steve yeah. Buglione, number 20. But just couldn't get it to him, so it'll be third down and 10 now. That's the first pass attempt by Matt Coleman in the ball game. It's a difficult position to pass from because you have that wind, you know, biting right into your face. And a whistle on the play, a penalty marker, and this is going to be delay of game against the Wildcats. So a five-yarder will push him back and bring up a third down and 15. It seemed like they were a little hesitant, Westlake. Now, if they are using audibles, it would be interesting to know if they are, 
and then the, the defense can shift at the last minute or move around and this would really delay the game more because now the quarterback has to wait until the defense is set before he calls the play. Ball is loose, finally comes back into the hands of Matt Coleman. And a penalty on the play, J.P. McGinnity doing a little wrestling out there with Billy Sabatino. Oh, Billy Sabatino. He's a senior, 6'1", 200 pounds. He's a three-year starter. He's a tenacious defensive ball player and plays with reckless abandon. Let's see this play right here. West Lake in the eye formation. The ball's bobbled. Oh, we didn't see the little tussle. There. Right at the end after that, uh, McGinnity and Sabatino started to wrestle a little bit. A flag went down, and um, we're going to see uh, exactly what the call will be and who's it going against. And I think it's going against Westlake because Rich Beckley is halfway out onto the field talking to John Storty. And it will be against the Wildcats on sportsmanlike conduct, another 15-yarder. Now, one thing about number 77, Bill Sabatino, if he takes his helmet off, you'll see he looks just like the boss. A tough defensive ball player for East Chester. Now, they're in a good position right here. East Chester's going to be in good field position. And if they set up a wall to the wide side of field, let's say if they set the wall up to the left, or they can go for the block. That's the coach's decision. There's Sabatino right there. You see how it looks like the Boz? Blonde hair. Yes, Billy! What the Boz was to Oklahoma, that's what Sabatino is to East Chester. There he is. Intense ball player, three-year starter. Last year, he was a defensive starter, touched the ball twice and scored two touchdowns. So Westlake will punt the football away. They've got a fourth down and about 40. A low line drive, and it is Burrow again. Tries to go right up the middle of the field. Not a whole lot there, but East Chester will have it in good field position again, first and 10 at the Westlake 39 yard line. Now it's interesting to note, John, Last week we had Scarsdale, Dorenzo was the quarterback. Now he had a no hitter, he's a pitcher, throws pass, throw passes excellent, and he knows the location. Butch Burroughs is also a pitcher, all section pitcher, and he can throw the ball and has good location. John Rosa, the starting quarterback, is not playing because he was in a bus accident, sort of like a stupid accident, and he really misses playing in this game. Burrow, looking to throw. Sideline route, Morgan wide open. And his block is in front of him, down inside the 20 to the 10 yard line. 30 yard pass completion. Burrow to Mickey Morgan. Now this is a pass well thrown. Now, Burrow's at the quarterback. Good location, lays it right in there. He's the pitcher throwing his teammate pitcher, Mickey Morgan. Good run, right down the sideline, all the way, trying to go in for the score. So first down for the Eagles, first and 10. The ball actually spotted again, just outside of the 10 yard line. So they can pick up a first down without getting the touchdown. Coming up to the three minute mark in the first half. East Chester's unbalanced right. Bro to Gabelli, turns the corner, and down to the one-yard line. Looks like he may have gotten the first down. He might. He tried to stretch that arm over the goal line, but his knee hit first, and uh, it is close enough for that measurement. Now, here's the unbalanced right. You know they're going to come to the right. There's a good block by Patrol. Nice run. See how Matt Gabelli lowered his shoulder to knock that defender down and trying to get that extra yardage and go in for the score. When you see that unbalanced line, you know, you really have to be thinking that they're going to run to that side. Here, we're going to see this again. Let's watch the blocking. Number 30, there's Petrillo. Beautiful block. Gate okay, couldn't make the tackle on Matt, trying to take it in. Now they're going to bring the chains all the way across. And uh, as we mentioned, they can get a first down without getting the touchdown. 
And they miss both of them. So they are a yard from the first down marker, a yard and a half from the goal line. And it will be second down and goal from the one. Let's see if they come out again in an unbalanced line and run to the unbalanced side, to the strong side. Usually when you do that, you have more advantage of blocking. You know, you may have two double teams right on that one side if there's no adjustment made by the defense. That's it, second and inches. If, uh, I, I wasn't going to mention this, but uh, they, they're getting a towel out there to start to dry up the field. It's still a little soggy, and there's some soft spots. And uh, today's uh, head linesman, John Malnati, will be able to attest to that. As he was running down to pick up the chains, his feet kind of gave out from underneath him. And uh, now those nice, clean white pants are not so clean any longer. John would appreciate the fact that we're watching him do his job, and that we... Uh, very rarely miss anything here at Cape 3. Yeah, sure and a lot, he's going to appreciate Yeah, a that. lot of people, you know, just watch the players, the game. You got to watch the officials sometimes, too. To see they're really into it, being alert, they're perspiring a little bit, running around. Penalty on the they play. Are. They are. Reese Chester did come out unbalanced right again. Jimmy Handel lining up as a tight end, jumped before the snap, and that's a legal procedure against the Eagles. That's a pretty big penalty down deep. And it'll bring it back to the six yard line where it'll be second and goal from there now, or pardon me, second down and five. They can pick up that first down. So they'll get the, they're gonna keep the clock rolling. 2.26 left to go. First half, East Chester leading 7-6 in this one and threatening again. Gabelli with the call, following his guard, and again, very close to the goal line. And again, very close to that first down marker. But it will be third down. Again, third and inches for the first, third and one for the touch. And a whistle on the play, timeout taken by Westlake. That's their second, and they'll have one more remaining. So we'll hold things up here at Jarvis Bowl as the East Chester Eagles leading Westlake by a score of seven to six, but they're threatening again. And when we come back, the Eagles will have it third down and one from the two yard. Sports special, and now she's uh, back as a full-time student and enjoying the football game, as are we, and uh, we hope you are as well. Seven six the score, a minute 51 left to go in the second quarter. The Eagles on top seven six, and coming up at halftime, in today's ball game, we're going to have a chance to enjoy the East Chester High School Marching Band and their halftime presentation. And we'll also take a look at the halftime tally and the scoring pages. Plus, we'll have second half action. Now, we saw Stephanie Ives before, but she's on assignment. She writes for the school paper, and she's covering the football game. There you have it, working again. Just another one of those working steps. Third and one. It's Gabelli. He's in. Second touchdown of the day, or for East Chester, the first by Matt Gabelli. And the Eagles now on top, 13 to six. Now Matt Gabelli's the tailback, you're gonna see him. You know, let's watch number 30, Petrillo blocking. There's the block, Matt Gabelli going right through. The, once that ball breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. Can't go after, it's not a fumble. So now the extra point attempt, Ralph Zingaro in. Burrow the holder again. Kick is away, and it is good. So with a minute 50 left to play in the first half, the Eagles strike again. They lead the Wildcats by a score of 14 to six. Uh, I'm really impressed with their offensive running. Uh, it's really, maybe because it's the first home game or what, they just have it together, doing a great job offensively. The blocking is there, it's consistent. 
now they're psyched. They're pumped up. They have the momentum. They're going to go down there. They're going to try to play good, good, solid defense. You know, keep them in a hole. You know, but the one thing I'm noticing, there's an awful lot of celebrating going on on the East Chester sidelines, and, and I'm sure uh, rightfully so, being 0-2. And uh, they, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the offense in the first two games got over 100 total yards combined in those two games. That, that's exactly right. So that's, that's why, you know, they're sort of excited. But There's you know, another and, half of football to play yeah, at. Yeah, another... You know, tell a guy, you know, don't celebrate. You know, it's expected. You know, we had a good hard week of practice. It's expected that we played as well. They're just like, you know, wow, we did this, you know. Still a lot of football. Westlake, a team, runs that Veer offense, and as we've already seen, they can break it in a hurry. Another low line drive, and this one's still loose on the turf. Finally picked up. As the full or the quarterback Matt Coleman, the deep man on the receiving team, brings the ball back to the 17 yard line. So again, Westlake with just terrible field position in this game. Their last three possessions, they started at their own seven, their own 27, and now their own 17. And uh, that wind blowing right in their faces. There's John DiArco, his club up 14-6. Time running down here in the first half. Coleman brings the club up, McGinty and Milek. The backs behind him. Right up the middle, and it is number 40, Joe Catalano, who gets the call. Nice gain for him of six yards. And it'll be second down and four. The Wildcats in a hurry up offense now. Coming up to the one minute mark. Coleman again, off of tackle, this time to Steve Casal. Number 22, the senior fullback. And Casal comes up short of the first down by about a yard. That scoring summary. Well, before we get to that, here's a timeout. All right, there you see the scoring summary. Timeout taken by Eastchester. That's their second. 39 yards and five plays. Gabelli with a one-yard run. And Eastchester now on top, 14 to six. Uh, Coach John DiArco there, I heard him along the sideline screaming for a timeout. Is that because uh, Westlake just moving a little too fast for his defense? Well, what what the big mistake I think Westlake made on that last play was they ran right at Bill Sabatino. Now, he's the anchor that defense, and you're not going to pick up too many yards, which they didn't. But what DiArco's the head coach, the defensive coordinator, that's his specialty. He likes it. He loves it. He does not want them to get a first down. And when the, the defensive calls are going in, they're going to have to pick them up quickly and then execute, get in that defense immediately because he could, he could be calling an eagle, a hawk, you know, going to a monster, a rover, any one of those defenses, and they have to get into it quickly because, like you said, if Wesley comes out and they run a hurry-up offense, they may catch East Chester off guard. So the timeout over. You mentioned charge to the Eagles. Each team has used two. They have one left. Rich I, Beckley heads back to the sidelines. I wouldn't be surprised if Diarco said, now once the tackle's made, everyone immediately get back into that huddle and listen to the defensive call and get into that defense. Third down and one. However, there are only 47 seconds left in this first half. Cassell and... Catalano, the setbacks, it's Catalano around end. He gets the first down across the 30 to the 32-yard line. And uh, they'll stop the clock to move the chains. First down number three for the Wildcats. And Westlake right back up on the line of scrimmage. So as soon as the chains are set, they'll start the clock with 47, 40 seconds left. And there it goes. Now with 40 seconds left, he, Coach Diarco might have told the guy when you make the tackle, stay on him, get up slowly, eat up the clock. Back to Catalano. Felt it a couple of times at the 30-yard line. And uh, timeout on the field taken by Westlake. And that is their third and final timeout in this first half. That was Bill Sabatino that put that hit on. You see that offensive back go right on his back? Vicious hit. So the clock stopped, 26 seconds left to go. 
East Chester leading 14-6. Well, after we get out of this wacky weekend, uh, we're going to settle down to a more rigid schedule for all of you and for all of us. And uh, next on the schedule on the Cable 3 Sports High School Football Game of the Week, we've got a League 9 meeting as the Panthers of Rye Neck take on the Tigers of Tuckahoe. And that'll be over at Tuckahoe High School. And you'll be able to see that game Saturday at 8, Sunday at 10, and Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Now, a couple of notes on that game. Tuckahoe, of course, as you know, uh, with a brand new coach, Ralph Nicoletti. They're 0-2, losing uh, to Bronxville and Tuckahoe. Rynek, on the other hand, 1-1 one one coming into this weekend's play. But uh, they had a major loss last week when their quarterback, Ricky Talibi, went down with a compound fracture of the right thumb. And uh, we've heard since he is out for the remainder of the season. So the Panthers will not have Talibi at quarterback. George Piscalis will be running the show. So it could be a very interesting meeting between those two schools, Reineck and Tuckahoe, on the next game of the week. Oh, what a loss. Talibi's, I thought, I saw him scrimmage, and he did an excellent job of passing. Though know, he's just picking up where he left off last year. three-year starter at quarterback, and tough loss for Jerry Fiore over at Reineck. First and 10. Clock is rolling. Right up the middle, big hole for Casal. Breaks it to the middle, cross midfield, and gets it down to the 45-yard line. But remember, Westlake without any timeouts left. So the clock will stop as the chains move up. Oh, you have to watch a screen and a draw here, a screen and a draw. They, Westlake has two wide receivers to the right. Actually, a slot right. 16 nice. seconds left. Shotgun formation. Coleman looking deep towards the sidelines, and it's incomplete. Looking for Chris Sargent, number 88, is tied in. And that win may have gotten a hold of it. Take another look at that run by uh, the fullback, Steve Cassell, a 5'8 senior. Well, look in the middle. The middle's wide open. He's going for the goal line right there. Wide open. Good blocking right there at the middle. 20-yard carry. The next play, an incomplete pass that stops the clock with 11 seconds to go. And the center for Westlake is Paul Schiller. He's only 5'5", 155 pounds. He has a lot of moxie, scrappy, excellent blocker. Second and 10, Coleman. And it is completed to Cassell. But they may not have enough time to get the next playoff. And they won't. No timeouts left, and the pass completed in the field to play. It's good for five yards, but that will do it for the first half on the game of the week, and a pretty good first half at that. At the end of the first 24 minutes of action here at Jarvis Bowl, the East Chester Eagles lead the Westlake Wildcats by a score of 14 to 6. And in just a moment, we'll return with the East Chester High School marching band, the halftime tally, and the scoring pages when we come back in a moment. Push, pull, or shove your car to Crabtree Hyundai, and we'll give you up to $1,000 towards the Hyundai of your choice. Hyundai, the car that makes sense, now makes more sense. You heard right, $1,000 for any car you can push, pull, or shove to Crabtree Hyundai. Don't get shut out. Payments starting as low as $95 a month. Unbelievable. From now till the end of the month, call us, then come in and make a deal. Do it today. Crabtree Hyundai, 162 Main Street, New Rochelle. Call 636-8585. Cable 3 News, Westchester's only live 30-minute television news program. From our New Rochelle studios, here's Kevin McCain. Good evening. News from around the county and around your neighborhood. Politics, business, sports, medicine, and just plain people appear every week on Cable 3 News. <laughs> Westchester's news program live at 6.30, Cable 3 News. And we're back here at Jarvis Bowl at halftime of the second part of our doubleheader this week on the high school football game of the week. And at the end of the first by a score of 14 to 6. Burrow to kick it away. That's a nice kick into that win. Coleman will field it at his own 10. Wedge sets up right up the middle of the field and down he goes at the 25. So the Wildcats will set it up there first and 10. And again, we refresh your memories to the starters for the Wildcats. Matt Coleman is the quarterback, number 14. He is a junior. The tailback, number 33, J.P. McGinnity. The fullback, Steve Casale, number 22. The Z-back is number 12, Jeff Weigel. 
And the two tight ends in the double tight end system is number 20, Steve Bouguillon, and number 88, Chris Sargent. First and 10 from the 25 to open up this second half. And back to the ground game. They've only uh, thrown it. They've only thrown the ball once today. And uh, pick up, and on that, and on that play, a pickup of four yards, we'll call it, and it'll bring up second down and six. On the offensive line for the Wildcats, Paul Schiller is the center, Lou Piccione and Dave Healy, the two guards, Anthony Delaroso and Bill McKenna will be the two tackles. This time it'll be Chris Milek, backup tailback, and Milek gets it across the 30, up to the 33, we'll call it. It'll be third down and two from there. On the defensive side of the field for the Eagles, on that four-man front, Chris McCory, Joe Chiffone, Ralph Zepetti, and Billy Sabatino, with the two inside linebackers, Paul Petrillo and Ralph Zingaro. Westlake now with a third down and two. Coleman with the set, flips it out. Joe Catalano, and he is caught for a loss. Drop back at the 32-yard line, and that's gonna bring up a fourth down, and the Eagles will have to punt it away. And uh, the deep backs for the Eagles on defense, the outside men, Matt Gabelli, or pardon me, uh, that's right, Matt Gabelli and Philip Maldari. The corners, Mickey Morgan and Butch Burrow, and the safety will be Mark Della Femina. So fourth down, and the Westlake Wildcats doing their Rockettes impersonation. One, two, three, kick. Weigel, a line drive. And that one taken. And right down he goes at the 43-yard line. Picking up that one there for Eastchester. Pardon me. Number 80, Mike Salvatore. So the Eagles come back out on offense, first and 10. Butch Burrow will again be the starting quarterback, junior, 6'1", 160. The tailback, Matt Gabelli. The fullback, Paul Petrillo. Halfback is Mickey Morgan. The wide receiver, number 80, is Mike Salvatore with the tight end, number 28, Jimmy Handel. Westlake starting the second half in a 5-3 defense. East Chester, power I left offense. From their own 43-yard line. It's Mickey Morgan, and he popped again by that tight end, Larry Riccardi. And uh, Morgan gets credit for two yards. It'll be second down and eight. On the offensive line for the Eagles, the center is Joe Luciano, the two guards, Rocky LaFaro and Chris McCory, and the two tackles, Ralph Fuschillo and Billy Sabatino. The offensive line averaging 5'11", 188 pounds. Second and eight. This will be Gabelli. Looks to turn the corner, nothing doing. There's Riccardi again as he makes the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. And he'll bring up a third down and eight. On the defensive side of the field for the Westlake Wildcats in that five-man front, that man we've been calling all day, Larry Riccardi at one end. Ralph Zigno is the other defensive end. The two tackles, Anthony De La Rosso and Chris Milek. And the nose guard, number 52, is Paul Schiller. Senior 5'5", 155. I guess you'd call that a spark plug. Yeah, he's, he has moxie. He's a good blocker, quick feet, good technique, and that's why he's in there. Now, the center for East Chester is Joe Luciano. His father's a coach. Last year, he played for Iona. Pitch comes near side. And nothing there at all. Della Femina, number 22, at the carry, and he lost uh, two yards, and it'll bring up a fourth down. And the remainder of the defensive set for the Wildcats, the middle linebacker, Bill McKenna, the two outside men, Steve Cassell and Steve Bugliome. The cornerbacks are Matt Coleman and Matt Brown, and the safety, number 12, is Jeff Weigel. So uh, each team taking their three downs and punting the football away. East Chester will now do the same. Butch Burrow, he'll set up at his own 30-yard line. 
Got a penalty on the play. Westlake with too many men on the field. It's a short kick, but does take an East Chester roll, and we'll go to bounce at the 25-yard line, but a penalty marker on the play. Westlake with 12 men on the field, and uh, that 12th guy realized it about two seconds too late and couldn't get off the field in time. So this should give East Chester the football back. Again, our official crew today, John Storty is the referee, Tom Barone, the umpire, John Malnati, the head linesman, and the field judge is Bill Strumke. And they're talking with Petrillo, Paul Petrillo, captain for the Eagles. And we had a similar situation in the first half. It was a 15-yard penalty, and uh, Westlake got the ball back. And I think that's, uh, you can hear in the background, our microphone's right down on the East Chester sidelines, and uh, that boisterous barrel of a voice is John DiArco. And uh, he's asking now, uh, why isn't it a 15-yard penalty like it was before? And why don't we have the first down? Well, whatever it is, John's happy with the call. The guy is in the field play. Illegal substitution. Oh, there's the difference. Oh, illegal illegal substitution and too many men on the field. So a quick clarification there. Thank, uh, thank you, Coach DeArco. He does know his football, doesn't he? Boy, he's right on top of that. He got the official over. What was the call? So uh, it makes it fourth and six. So East Chester will still punt it away. Burroughs with a good snap and gets off a beauty. Get it down! And it will just get into the end zone by a yard. Burrow almost had it die dead at the goal line, but a very, very nice punt, 60 yards. And it will come out to the 20-yard line, and Westlake will have it there, first and 10. Good kick into the wind. Boy, he hit the spiral. It just really, once you get some uh, air underneath that ball, you have a nice, beautiful spiral. That ball is really going to carry right into the end zone right here, just as you said, John, just by about a foot. So first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Westlake has just had terrible field position all day long. No, I don't see uh, J.P. McGinty in there for Westlake, number 33, the man that scored their touchdown. Right now they've got Cassell and Joe Catalano in the backfield, and they go right up the middle. It's Cassell, the lead back through. 5'8", senior fullback, 140 pounds, and he gets it just to the other side of the 20-yard line. They'll spot it actually at the 22, so give him two yards, and it will be second down and eight. Clock is rolling, 6.40, make it 6.38 to go. Third quarter, East Chester leading 14 to six. Now, John, at halftime, I spoke to a couple of individuals down near the field, and they said that McGinty was thrown out of the game because of that little altercation with uh, Bill Sabatino. Well, you're right, he's not in the, in the lineup, and uh, taking a look across the way, I don't even see him standing along the sidelines. And he's a key player. He's at a skilled position. Well, that'll happen. Matt Coleman uh, looks like he was changing up his cadence at the offensive line, and the Eagles' defense chomping at the bit, and uh, they jump into that neutral zone. So it's a five-yard penalty offsides against the Eagles. Usually when you see this, it's uh, the quarterback has changed his cadence. He may go on one or two. Uh, play after play after play, and then all of a sudden he'll change it to let's go on three or four, and that's going to get the defense every yeah, now and yeah, then. Yeah, and also you're a little anxious on that defensive line, and you know you're used to hearing it go, the ball being snapped always on two, and then you're going to assume it's going to be at that call, and then you're ready to go. And another penalty on the play, and I think this time East Chester lining up in the neutral zone. They're looking at Billy Sabatino. And yeah. that, uh, you get that call here in high school football as soon as the players come out and are set. If uh, one of those players are lined up in the neutral zone, they'll just throw the flag, blow the whistle, and march off five quick yards. Well, that's one mistake you don't want to make. When that football is placed on the ground, you draw an imaginary line, the end of the football to the sideline, the opposite end of the football, sideline. That's the neutral zone, and neutral zone's about 12 inches wide. You cannot have your helmet, hand, foot, or anything in that neutral zone. The only person is the center. 
So first down on the two straight penalties. First and 10 for the Wildcats from their own 33. Quick opener, complete. Weigel makes the reception. Good move to the outside and is finally forced out of bounds across the 50-yard line. Della Femina making the tackle. And a good pass play, and Westlake now in business. This is a look-in pattern. You have the wide receiver to the left just coming to the inside. There's the reception going down, picking up as many yards as he can. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to force Eastchester to bring a linebacker and play walkaway position. That's half the distance between that split end and the tackle. And then now Westlake will have the opportunity to run a little bit up in the middle. They're just loosening that defense up. Now they, they're in a Vera attack now, Vera attack offense. Chris Lawrence is in the game, split to the bottom of the screen. Big rush is on, and he's just able to get it away. An incomplete pass, Sabatino was the first one to get to Coleman, and then Petrillo came up and really belted him right after Coleman got rid of the football. It goes as an incompletion, but that's a great defensive charge. Now that, that, that's exactly the play that makes it, that defensive pressure. Sabatino coming in and Janeo right there by Petrillo. Well, that would have been about a 30-yard loss. Now, you know if Petrillo was in there, that, that play was uh, the defense. It was a blitz because Petrillo's a linebacker and the blitz was called, and he's rushing right in there with Sabatino, the defensive end. So it'll be second down and 10 now. And a whistle on the field. Uh, one of the players uh, fixing a shoelace. When that linebacker's blitzing, you have to have one of the backs picking him up and executing a block on him. Watch the hit that uh, Petrillo puts on Coleman. Right there, boom. <laughs> right through him. What a belt. Second down and 10, play action. Little flare pass incomplete. And I'll tell you something. Steve Guglielmo heard footsteps, and he heard Gabelli coming over. Come on, honey! He had his hands on it, then started to look upfield, right there. Gabelli right on the tackle, and it'll bring up a third down and 10. So Coleman on the day now. Two of five for 18 yards passing. Third and ten. Ball remains on the East Chester side of the 50-yard line. East Chester's in a 4-4 defense. Coleman with a play action. Pops it up, and it is incomplete. The defense got a hand on it and almost tipped it into the paws of Jeff Weigel, the Z-back. But that will go as an incompletion. And we'll bring up fourth down. And what East Chester's doing, they're lining up in a 4-4 defense, and they're sending a linebacker in on a blitz, which is actually making it a 5-3 defense. Now look here, see if Weigel in, uh, does come up with a football or not. Well, John Malnati right there on the play, and uh, he had the best look at it. So uh, Wildcats forced to punt it away and flags around. Westlake not with the right players out on the field. And uh, jumping in, John Chung, number 75, but everybody was set. And as soon as he moved into somebody's position, that meant people had to move around, and that's illegal procedure in everybody's book. All right, they want to, the guys in the truck are convinced that Weigel came up with the pass. Now that ball hit the ground. The official was right there. It's an incompleted pass. They just won't believe us. That's the way it's going to stand. Yep. Weigel, end over end kick. Ball fumbled. And it belongs to the Eagles, I believe. A low line drive. Yeah, East Chester did fall back on it. Very fortunate there. A low line drive that the Eagles tried to handle on the run and it came out loose and at the bottom of the pile. And I guess the man who finally came up with the football for Eastchester. And that's Ray Lubrino, number 20, sophomore cornerback. Now, we're going to watch the offense of East Chester. Now, in the first half, they were very successful with twins and putting a man in motion to, to decide of the twins. 
They were also successful with an unbalanced line. Now, right now, they're coming unbalanced right. Unbalanced right formation. Big hole opens up for Paul Petrillo. And the fullback bounces across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Gain on the play of uh, five yards. Make it six. It'll be second down and four. These Chester's going what was very good for them in the first half, that unbalanced line. Now, if Westlake does not adjust that unbalanced line, they're going to stay with the unbalanced, and then they'll mix it up a little bit with that twins. They're going with the bread and butter, the things that are working for them this afternoon in this game. Here's, in here's, motion. here's the motion to the twins. Here's the motion. There it is. Roll out by Burrow. Sideline route, and it's incomplete. Almost grabbed by Mickey Morgan. Buglielm in on the coverage, number 20 for the Wildcats. And it'll bring up second down. But there's another penalty on the play. Now you're gonna you're gonna see right here. Here's the pass. It would have been a nice one-arm stab. One-arm catch. You got want to put that stickum they used to have years ago. You spray it on your hand and you you know the ball hits, so you just have those big paws and you come up with a spectacular catch. A one-handed. Now, now, this is a situation right here. If this puts Eastchester way back there, and with the wind blowing, there may be a possibility of a poor punt, and then Westlake will have good field position. But they're fighting, they're not giving up. It's only 14-6, anything can happen. One team scores 14 points and a half, the opposite team can score 14 points the next half, or more. Penalty holding against the Eagles, 10-yarder. Here's Burrow on the keeper. Trying to turn the corner, cannot do so. And thrown out of bounds by number 19, Chris DeGracia, reserve linebacker and just a sophomore who's come into the lineup. Bill McKinnon, number 56, he's the middle linebacker for Westlake. He's the strongest lineman on the team. He's the best hitter. His brothers have made all county. His brother Marcy, when he played at Stepanak, and then he went on to play at the University of El Paso. And his brother Dan, who played for Westlake, he starts for Pace now, but he played under Dino Gar when they were undefeated. Billy McKinnon can bench press 310 pounds. His responsibility is to control the ball carrier, make sure he doesn't pick up any yardage from tackle to tackle. He's the must-stop man. Timeout on the field, taken by the Eastchester there, Eagles. There's Billy right there. You see him, number 56. Strongest man in the team, comes from a family of football players, all county and playing in college. All right, while we have this timeout, uh, how about we bring you up to date on the latest top fives? That sounds like a pretty good idea. On a day like this, you need something to kind of warm the cockles of your heart. Well, this should do it. In Class A, going into uh, week number three, it's the Roosevelt Indians at 2-0 leading the pack. They're going to play Monday afternoon against Clarkstown North. Scarsdale, they're a winner over Carmel this weekend. They're at 3-0. North Rockland, a winner over New Rochelle. They go to 3-0. White Plains will play at Mamaroneck Monday. They're still at 0-0, and, and Osnick, 3-0 on the year. The Indians beat Carmel, or beat Lakeland, rather, 26 to nothing. And uh, we'll get to the rest of the Bs and Cs in a couple of minutes. Right now, it is third down and eight for Eastchester. The ball at their own 33-yard line. Wide receivers everywhere. Burrow in trouble. Slips away from two tackles. Now heads for the sidelines. And they have the first down. A great individual effort by the quarterback. A lot of trouble in the backfield. Shucked and jived his way to the sidelines. And they say he stepped out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So he will be about a half a yard shy of that first down stake. Very close. Boy, what individual effort right here. Here's Burrow. He's a talent. He has the ability. Missed tackle right there. That very crucial. Now he wants to go for the first down. He lowers the boom, picking up extra yardage, but stepping out of bounds. That's what really hurt right there because he did pick up some yardage. So Burrow back to punt the football away. 317 left to go. 
in this third quarter. And before the kick is gone, we've got more penalties on the play. It looked like movement on the East Chester line. Illegal procedure. Another five yarder. That is penalty number eight for East Chester in the game. A total of 55 yards. You know, you have to realize how close this game is. If Westlake scores, goes for two, you have a tight ball game. This is a close, knit and tuck Donnie Brook of a game. Burrow again. This one not nearly as good as his last kick. And it does take sort of an East Chester bounce and sails out of bounds at the Westlake 49 yard line. So the Wildcats with uh, 304 left to go in this third quarter will have it first and 10. And uh, for the first time since their opening possession, will have a pretty decent field position. Who we got up there? Tim Carney and Miles Rich working the up top cameras today up on the roof. Now this is where Westlake's gonna have to maintain a drive, get good field position, keep on going down. They're much closer to the goal line. On the opposite side, the defense is going to have to really rise up. They're going to have to come up with some big plays. Oh, there's a mix-up mix up in the backfield of Westlake. Across the middle, incomplete. Cassell, the intended receiver, number 22. And, yep, you guessed it, more flags on the field. We'll see what this one is will be. The officials are counting players then, are counting helmets. I didn't watch it. I They're counting players all afternoon. I count 12 out there. Yep. So this will go against the Wildcats again. I still think they have 12 players out there. They do. There are 12 players. One of you get out. There he goes. No, not two, just <laughs> one. Now they'll get him back. So a 15-yarder again. That illegal substitution call. And that is penalty number eight for the Wildcats in this ball game, a total of 70 yards in penalties for Westlake. <laughs> and coach, uh, we just did get confirmation from uh, Mark Felice, the assistant for Westlake, that JP McGinnity was thrown out of the ball he game. He was? Wow. <laughs> so that, that a big that, loss. That hurts Westlake right there. Full house backfield now for the Wildcats. Play action, Coleman looks to throw, incomplete. A little short for Weigel. And again, the Eagles defense right on top of Coleman. Way to go, McCorry! They're in a power eye right formation. Look at the backside, the backside defensive end. Chris McCorry, the man who... Uh, oh, Chris McCorry, he transferred from Hackley. Last year he played there, now he's playing defensive end for the Eagles. He's a junior, a tough individual. So it'll bring up a second down at 25 now. And another official timeout on the field. Way to go, McCorry! I think if I heard right, they're looking for the, uh, the doctor to get to the other side of the field. Looks like there's an injured Wildcat on the bench. Well, I know Dr. Boyer is here. I spoke to him at halftime. Well, while we got the stoppage of play, let's go back to the top fives and uh, pick it up where we left off over in Class B. A couple of very big games today uh, featuring number one and number two, the Rye Garnets and the Byram Hills Bobcats doing battle as we speak up in Byram Hills. And uh, also today, 
Harrison, number three, takes on number four, Porchester. And that one being played at uh, Harrison High School this afternoon. And the John Jay Indians, they improved to two and one on the air with their seven nothing win over Peekskill on Friday night. And uh, finally in Class C, the Pleasantville Panthers continue to lead the race. They're at 2-0. They're playing Briarcliff this afternoon. Hackley defeated Croton 20-18, so number two beats number three. Irvington, a winner over Valhalla, 16-0. And Hastings takes on Ryan Eck this Monday. Second down at 25. Coleman, the quarterback. And again, motion on the line. This time, Bill McKenna, the right tackle, jumps. And it will be second down and 30. Over-anxious. East Chester's playing a 4-4 defense. Watch Bill right here. He makes that little move right now. Offside. Nine penalties for the Wildcats, 75 yards. And Rich Beckley, not a happy man along the sidelines the mistakes will kill you just like in baseball when you walk people a little motion in the backfield but Casal able to stop for a penalty thrown and Casal gets the football and gets two yards and Paul Petrillo was in on that tackle a solo hit So it'll now be third and 23. Now the way the Wildcats are moving here in the third quarter, they've got the wind to their backs, but they're gonna lose it soon. A minute 47 to go, third quarter. East Chester leading 14-6. From the 30-yard line. It's a quick kick. And a good one. And Della Femina is gonna try to take it. And he's able to turn the corner. He'll bring it back up the field. Nice play as he got it back to the 45-yard line. Kind of snapped it out of the air. And East Chester will have it after Westlake with the quick kick. And East Chester has it first and 10. Yeah, Mark Delafemo right here. It's a gamble. Nice quick kick. Well executed. The ball's bouncing around. Usually when it hits the ground, let it go. That's a gamble. Okay, he took it. He's heading the sideline. Picking up that yardage, trying to break it loose. It's dangerous to do a play like that. Very dangerous. Nine times out of ten, that ball comes out. That ball goes to the opposite team. <laughs> so Butch Burrow brings the club up. First and ten. They go right up the middle. And it's Petrillo who gets the call. And Petrillo gets one. Be second down and nine. Clock continues to roll. 50 seconds left, third quarter. Get him some water. Get Petrillo blow. Come on, Marty. Get over here. Oh, you, you hear Coach the arc goes. Defense, okay? They'll beat themselves with the mistakes. Right? Get a blow. Take a blow. And talk to Coach. Okay, he's telling uh, Petrillo to get a coach, drink, get relax a, a little bit. Let's go. We get the win with third down here. Second down and nine. Wildcats showing blitz, but pull back. Burrow on the rollout towards the sidelines. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Excellent defensive play by Matt Brown, the cornerback, who came up in front of Joe Pinto to knock it away. That was a beautiful play by Brown. What he did, he had a good angle. He went right for the ball. Some players are just happy making a tackle, but he took the gamble, went for the ball. If he picked it off, he had the sideline. It was wide open. 10 seconds left, third quarter. East Chester now with a third and nine. And don't forget, when East Chester goes the opposite way, they'll have the wind behind them, and then, then I think we're gonna see them start using their aerial attack. Morgan, the slot back. The game, the game, the game. Burrow gives the football off to his tailback, Gabelli. Okay. Actually, that's Jimmy Handel, number 28, the tight end, who uh, made the or got the carry. He picked up two yards, but the third quarter 
has come to an end here at Jarvis Bowl with the score, East Chester 14 and Westlake 6. And we'll return to East Chester High School with more of the game of the week right after this short timeout. Start the fourth quarter as the teams have switched ends and East Chester will be facing a fourth and six. And uh, Westlake thinks they're going to punt. They've got uh, Steve Cassell as the deep back standing at his own 15 yard line. Butch Burrow in the lineup. He is also the punter as well. East Chester looking for their first win of the season. 0-2 coming into okay. today's game. Okay. And uh, Westlake at 1-1. One one. Last week had a very big win over Edgemont, 33-0. But they're having their troubles here. And, uh, you know, on Friday, Coach, when we watched uh, Bronxville beat Ardsley, we talked about how the turnovers were a big key, uh, Ardsley with five of them, and that led to Bronxville's 14-0 win. Uh, right now, going into the last quarter, if you want to point to one stat that is uh, either in favor or not in favor of a victory or defeat, and that's the uh, 90 yards and penalties that Westlake has picked up. Also look at that two-yard punt. And again, yeah. whistles on the play. Oh, Burroughs oh. hit a bullet. Out of shame. That one sails oh. into the end zone, but they're gonna bring that back. 65 yards Boy, in the he, air. He knocked that one. Stiff, but uh, motion on the line, and it goes against the Eagles. Ooh, what a punt. That's the ninth penalty for Eastchester, but only, I can say, with a slight grin, only 60 yards. <laughs> so they'll move it back five and give Burroughs another crack at it. Well, I've seen a couple of good punters the last couple of days. Dave Styers over at Bronxville oh, with a 63 yeah, yarder. Yeah, and then I, I thought it was 73 yards, John. Someone told me it was 73 yards. It's a pretty good one. Fair catch signal for ball fumbled, and Cassell able to get, fall back on it. And Westlake will have it first and ten from their own 20. Who told yeah, you no, it was wait. 73? Yeah, no, let's get the truth. <laughs> Who told me? I asked how long was that punt. And someone, John no Cridio no said names. to me it was 73 yards. <laughs> oh, wow. And then after I interviewed Dave, yeah, Ernie he Palladino, real surprised, didn't Ernie he? <laughs> yeah, he was 73. He goes, really, was it? And Ernie Palladino, the sports writer, said that it was 60 races. No, 73. John's never wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Time out on the field taken by the uh, East Chester Eagles, now that's their second here in the second half. They'll have one more left. Westlake with all three of their timeouts remaining. And again, we want to remind you, coming up this Tuesday night here at Cable 3, another live edition of Extra Points. And uh, we'll have a whole bunch of highlights for you this week with uh, games being played Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Tuesday, we'll try to tie everything together. We'll also have brand new top fives. And we'll also have a chance to show you where the teams will be moving on when we go into week number four of this 1987 season. Remember, uh, these teams now starting to really get into the thick of conference battle, which means bowl invitations are on the line. And uh, it may be a little early, but some of those teams are uh, at this juncture of the season fighting to stay alive for a couple of those invitations. We're talking about a bowl game, I feel like I'm at the bowl game now in It's November. cold enough, isn't it? It is cold, windy. But the defense of East Chester is playing well this second half, but they're not playing well at all offensively. So first and 10 for Westlake. The ball will be at their own 20-yard line. There's Joe Luciano. You saw him. And His Burrow right there. His son's the, the center, Luciano. And we've got a new quarterback in now for Westlake, and it is Jeff Weigel, number 12. Started at the Z-back spot. And I'm wondering now if it's uh, Matt Coleman, who is the injured player along the sidelines. Yeah, Vinny Caparasso has just come in. He's the nose man over the center. Joe Schiffone on that defensive line. They're doing a good job. Doing a good job defensively. And another penalty. 
And this one against Westlake, illegal procedure. Another five yards tacked on. So that makes it now second down and 16. A loss of one on that last carry. Five yard penalty. And Westlake's going backwards. They're getting deeper and deeper into a hole. Charlie Merritt in the game is a wide receiver to the near side. Feigl pitches it outside. Cassell turns the corner. Gets a nice gain across the 20 yard line up to the 23. Eight yard pickup. And from there, it'll now be third down and eight. Clock is rolling, 10 28 to go, fourth quarter. Eastchester leads 14 6, all of the scoring coming in the first half. This is a tough position for Coach Ritchie of Westlake to begin. He has the wind against him. Right now, Mike, you know, you're looking for a, for a pass because of the yardage, maybe a screen to the right side of the field. Again, they give it back. Weigel tries to turn, slips away from a tackle, but is met head on by Chris McCorry, number 75, who blasts him out of bounds. And the ball is right at the 30-yard line. Watch again. They'll give it to the back. Swip and swap. Yep. And here he comes. Quarterback gets it going to the outside. Now he's going to that side and got to lower the shoulder. Have the defensive man bounce off you and pick up an extra two yards. That's what you want to do. So they spotted at the 31. A first down for Westlake. That's number seven on the day. An eight-yard gain. So when you run into the sideline like that, a back cannot be satisfied at just running and then run out of bounds. Once you get close to that sideline, lower the shoulder and pick up that extra two or three yards. Gassell turns the corner, runs headlong into the defensive secondary and gets it up to the 35-yard line. We have someone being taken to the hospital here, John. Ambulance on the other side of the field. And you can see the player in the back. I believe it is Coleman, Matt Coleman. He's starting quarterback. And uh, they're going to take him to the hospital for some x rays and observation. Second down and six. Weigel still has it. Big hole on the inside and a couple of penalty markers thrown at the end of that play as he gets it across the 40 to the 41 yard line and this one looks like an illegal block yep. against the Wildcats. Yep, it was a block below the waist. Now we'll take another look, see if you can pick it up. Okay, now right here. Now it's on the top. Oh, there, oh, right from, yep. yep, at the top of the screen. Yeah, top of the screen, below the waist. Now in college, that would be a good block, but in high school, you are not allowed to block below the waist. You have too many knee injuries. So 15 yards tacked on. That's 11 penalties against Westlake. 95 yards and you can see him working on Coleman his ankle on the sidelines Joe Catalano is in motion rushes on screen play it's completed right up the middle of the field Matt Brown number 42 makes the reception and now Jeff Weigel slow in getting up as he was pounded after he got rid of the football that's not a bad call by Westlake because they know the defense is charging hard of East Chester. Screen call right up the middle. Picked up good yardage trying to get the first down. 15 yard completion brings up a third down and eight. Now Westlake's in the eye. Chris Lawrence split to the near side. A wing eye formation. 
Here it is again, Weigel, but this time he's going trying to throw, gets it away, and it is incomplete, and a pass interference call will go against Westlake. Steve Cassell blocked Matt Gavelli before the ball hit the turf, and uh, that doesn't give him an opportunity to go after it, so it is pass interference and the loss of down. Too many mistakes, the second half. One blunder right after another. Push him back. See, right here, boom, nice block, but it's illegal. You have to wait until that ball hits the ground because Matt has a chance to get the interception. So the pass interference and the loss of down. So they'll take the 15 yards. And it will bring up fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised right here if we go, Coach Diarco goes for a punt block. You think so, even with the wind blowing? Well, he has the momentum going defensively. Yep. They're doing a good job defensively. They're driving him back, and let's go get the block. And then, we, you know, we only have about five, ten yards to go for a touchdown. And again, the Wildcats don't have enough players on the field. Before they had too many, now they don't have enough. Only nine players out on the field. So they have to quickly take a timeout. That is their first, and they'll have two more remaining. You know, I guess when it rains, it pours. Yeah, when things are going for you, you might as well go for the block. Go for the block punt. It may end up in the end zone when the guys fall on it. You have another touchdown. You need another touchdown in a game like this because a big play, it could end up in a tie. And they continue to work over on Coleman. Maybe they're putting that leg or the ankle in, the, in one of those uh, portable casts. So they uh, gonna make sure that that leg is steady before they'll transfer him. It's really tough break uh, for uh, Coleman, just a junior. And uh, the way things are looking over there, his season has come to an end. Yeah, the amazing thing is he's 5'11", he can dunk a basketball, he's a B student in school, he's a returning starter from last year. I hope it's not broken. But if they're putting a full splint on, that means they do not want any kind of movement with that leg. Immobilize it. So the timeout's still on the field. Charge to Westlake as uh, they try to get uh, the correct amount of players back out on the field. And while we have this uh, pause in the action, we'll remind you that coming up on our next high school football game of the week, it's a League Nine meeting. The Rhinek Panthers taking Watch on the, the Tuckahoe Tigers. It'll be over at Tuckahoe High School, and you'll be able to see it on our regular schedule, Saturday night at 8, Sunday morning at 10, and then again Tuesday Watch night at 8 p.m. Rhinek versus Tuckahoe on the throw. next game of the week. So, uh, Jeff Weigel, back to punt, standing at his own five-yard line. Good snap, gets the kick away. Nice spiral. Going to come down to Burrow at the 50. Slips away from one tackle and finally forced out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. And again, East Chester will have good field position. First and 10 from the Westlake 39-yard line with 7.47 remaining to play in the ball game. You remember what happened last year? Oh, one more. Just it up. Coach Diarco's reminding his team, what happened last year, they were ahead, and then near the end of the game, Westlake scored a touchdown to come up a winner. Doesn't want that to happen. Burrow calling the signals. To Gabelli, slips away from one and gets down to the 35 yard line. Five more yards for Matt Gabelli. That's his first carry here in the second half. He now has 63 yards rushing and it brings up a second down and five for the Eagles. 
this is a bad strategy. Now you run the ball, pick up four or five yards, pick up four or five yards, and then they're going to go into that twins. I'm just saying that because it worked for them in the first half. Put a man in motion, and then that's when you're going to throw the ball. They're lined up the same formation, and watch for a run. Burrow pitches it outside. Gabelli around the corner and goes out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And that'll be good for a first down. This man came up, looks like either an ankle. This is the option play. There's the fake. There's Butch. Beautiful pitch right there. Maccabelli going down the sideline. And right there, he may have twisted his ankle. I tell you, it oh, looks it's a more. Cramp. Yep, that's cramp. just what I was going to say. Days yeah. like these, they are notorious because uh, it's cold. The players aren't uh, drinking liquids or getting any fluids because it is so cold. And uh, that's how uh, Charlie Horses and Cramps occur. So you see, uh, taking uh, Coleman out of the ballpark. And uh, wish him the best of luck the remainder of the year. Here's Burroughs on a keeper. Blocker in front of him, and he ran right into him. Burroughs uh, tried to climb over the back of Chris McCory. That's what happens when uh, your uh, linemen aren't moving fast enough for well, your quarterback. Well, Chris is a guard, and what he did, he pulled. He was pulling left. Watch him. See the right guard? Here's Chris. Now he's pulling. Now he's getting a man. He's got a laid out block, and just a little bit too late. Butch turned it up a little bit too quickly. Well, he got two yards. And it brings up second down and eight ball right at the 25-yard line. Same formation by Eastchester. Burrow fakes it to the first back, gives it to his second man through. Chester will be facing a third down now. Della Femina with the carry. Pick up on the play of two yards. It'll be third and six. And now Salvatore comes split to the near side. Morgan to the near side. Again, the Wildcats having trouble getting the right personnel on the field. Here's Della Femina, big hole, breaks it to the outside. Penalty marker goes down, two go down, and Della Femia is down at the five-yard line, but that looks like an illegal block in there somewhere. Oh, what a beautiful hole. Excellent, beautiful call right here. Watch this, here's the trap. There's Corey, see him trap on that one? Look at that hole, it's wide open. A truck can go through that hole. Chris there McCorry pulling on an excellent trap play. And I think you saw the penalty, uh, number 24, Morgan, blocking from behind. And the penalty assessed, flip against the Eagles. A 15-yarder from the point of infraction. So uh, the down remains the same, and it'll be third and eight. So uh, Delafemia will get credit for the carry. 20 yards. And uh, they take away 15 with the penalty. And they'll try the same play. And this time he's belted down at the 20-yard line. He'll mark it at the 19, so give him five more. That play is open, the trap plays there. Chris McCory's doing a good job trapping his man, the hole is wide open, just run right through it, pick up the yardage. And a timeout on the field taken by Eastchester, that's their third, with 5-10 left to go in the ball game, and the Eagles holding on, they lead 14-6. That's the offside guard trapping. Now, I'm sure, Coach, a lot of folks at home are wanting to know why is Eastchester used all three of their timeouts. And um, I guess the John, uh, Coach Diarco thinks it's a pretty important score that he's got to get on the board. He definitely, he definitely wants to get another touchdown in there because anything can happen, any kind of a mistake, and it could end up in the tie. Uh, 
every pregame show, we uh, open up the vault of knowledge with Karowski's keys. How are they looking so far as we're in the, the fourth I, I'm right on a button because East Chester had to play assignment football, which they did. They took away the veer attack of Westlake. They, do, they did and do convert on third downs, which gave them, uh, gave them a good drive in the first half, and the offensive line is consistent, doing a good job of blocking this afternoon. Way to go. Fourth down, the Eagles will go for it. Burrow's looking to throw. Let's it fly, completes it to Morgan, and he goes down at the 15-yard line. If they spot it at the 15, he's got the first down. They'll spot it at the 16, and it'll be close enough to bring out the chains, but I think he has the first down. Uh, John, you know Mickey Morgan, he was the most valuable player he pitched in that game during the summer at the East Chester Pony Coat League. Most valuable player in baseball, and he comes up with a fine catch there. Good throw by Butch Burrows. Here's Butch, the little play action fake. He comes, throws it, boom, right in there to Mickey Morgan. And it is good for the first down. First down number eight by East Chester. That was one of my keys. They had to convert. They, every time that they are running, whether it's third or fourth down, they have to convert, and they're doing it. You know, I put a lot of thought into these keys, exactly what they have to do. Well, we knew you just didn't uh, write them down as you were driving in. Right on the money, too. <laughs> that's that's what's so surprising. <laughs> now, here's an unbalanced line. Unbalanced line for East Chester. First and 10. It's Petrillo. Whoa. Larry Ricardi picked him up and just threw him right back down. Nice tackle. Beautiful. He's right there. He wrapped his arms around him. Beautiful tackle. Unbalanced right there. Coming to the right. Watch his tackle. Beautiful. He wraps his arms, picks him up, and all he's got to do is just drive him back. He's a good but defensive end. He's played a whale of a game. An excellent game. Second down and seven. Ball now at the 12 yard line of Westlake. Clock is still rolling. 4 10 to go. East Fourth Chester, quarter. The East Chester's unbalanced left. It's Petrillo, and he slips as he tried to make his cut. He slams his hand into the turf. He knew it. He had a little hole open there for just a split second. But he went down and a loss on the play of about a yard. And now uh, official timeout on the field is the four minute warning being issued to both clubs. East Chester with no timeouts left. Westlake has two remaining in the final four minutes of the ball game. You know, John, you gotta be very careful here. You look where you are on the field and you have dirt in the middle of the field. If you're gonna run, you wanna go into the grass because now if the back does have to make a cut or a juke move, then he has something to grip those cleats on his shoes and make the turn and square the shoulders and go straight ahead. Once you start running into that dirt, and once the back cuts, you know he's gonna skid right out. So they'll get the clock rolling right away. East Chester now faced with a third down and eight from the Westlake 13 yard line. Petrillo and Gabelli the setbacks behind Burrow. Morgan the wingback, Burrow to throw. Towards the end zone, complete touchdown! Jimmy Handel left to go in the ball game. The penalty roughing the kicker.